Starship static fires are still happening as more changes to the vehicle are in the works. Starlink is dominating space and sea. Dragon receives more missions from NASA. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. After last Friday's episode was published, the F-22 demonstration team flew over Starbase, Texas, where SpaceX is building their fleet of starships. They were in the area for a rehearsal demo over South Padre Island. On Monday, Booster 7 was loaded with cryo, but detanked a couple of hours later. You may also see in the background there that the B7.1 test tank was brought back to the launch site as well. It was put through another round of stress testing on Thursday, no pop included. But a day prior to that on Wednesday, Booster 7 appeared to have attempted a three-engine static fire, but only two of those engines seemed to have lit up successfully. The third one was offloaded early this morning, and Elon, or his blurry doppelganger, was there to help out. Originally, SpaceX used the orbital launch mount to spin start the outer 20 engines of Starship's boosters, but Elon twatted they recently made changes, so the pad's quick disconnect will take that task for the inner 13 as well, and that an intense effort is underway to achieve robust engine containment in case of a rapid unscheduled disassembly, aka an explosion, to protect the booster, other engines, and launch ring. I don't know, maybe some kind of heavy counterproductive firewall or shield between the engine compartment and the LOX tank. Your guess is probably better than mine. Comment below. Elon did write the other day that Starship Super Heavy will grow by at least 5 to 10 meters over time, so maybe that has something to do with it. After B7 static fire, Starship 24 was also filled with cryo for an expected static fire, but one was not conducted. In maybe, maybe not relatable news, SpaceX has filed plans with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation to build a large 520,000 square foot shell building with a price tag of $43 million in Bastrop County, Texas. No specific reason was provided, but the speculation is it could be for a private airport, rumor has it SpaceX, not Elon, is interested in building, but that's unsubstantiated. Concerning Starlink, SpaceX won the appeal their satellite competitors brought before the U.S. Court of Appeals, upholding a lower court's decision to grant the company permission to operate their Starlink sats at lower orbits of 540 clicks, down from 1100, which of course will provide Starlink users with lower latency. Back in June, I reported that cruise liner Royal Caribbean had asked the FCC to expeditiously approve the use of Starlink services on their ships. Well, I guess their wish has been granted because the company just officially announced their plans to get her done. Kick-ass internet connection coming to RC ships soon, twatted the Musk man. The company writing that the installation of the technology has already begun across the fleet and is expected to be completed by the end of the first quarter next year. August was a busy month for Falcon 9. Six missions were executed during the 31 days. Elon writing SpaceX is now launching rockets about every five days. On Saturday night, 54 satellites, the heaviest payload mass to orbit yet for a recoverable Falcon 9, lifted off from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida, and were deployed successfully to the fourth orbital shell. This was the second mission for this particular booster, touching down on a shortfall of Gravitas. Then on Tuesday night, 45 Starlink satellites were launched from Slick 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, to the third orbital shell. The first stage landing at sea on Of Course I Still Love You. This marked the seventh mission for this booster, 59th overall Starlink mission, and 39th Falcon mission for the year. Stage one landing is confirmed. All right, and as you can see there, Falcon 9 has landed. Back in March, Elon announced they are aiming for 60 for 2022. Their previous record was 31, which they have obviously already surpassed, but Elon is already saying SpaceX is aiming for 100 flights for 2023. September has just begun, and already a Starlink mission is on deck. But this one may also host Spaceflight Industries Sherpa LTC-2 Space Tug for Boeing's Varuna Technology Demo Mission. And then there's Dragon. NASA and SpaceX are now targeting October 3rd to hoist Crew-5 to the International Space Station, which includes the vehicle's first cosmonaut. And NASA announced this week the agency has ordered an additional five commercial crew missions to and from the ISS as part of the Commercial Crew Transportation Capability Contract, bringing the total count up to 14, and with Boeing's Starliner capsule, allows the U.S. to maintain an uninterrupted presence on the space station until 2030. The fixed price of crew missions 10 through 14 is an additional billion and a half Musk bucks, courtesy of the American taxpayers and the taxpayers of the countries who tag along. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. If you remember back to May 2nd, Rocket Lab launched their 34 satellite rideshare mission to Sun Synchronous Orbit. There and back again was the first official attempt at catching an orbital class booster using the skyhook maneuver. Ultimately, the load was too unstable, so the heli released it to shoot down in the ocean, but it was still recovered in a slightly used condition. Well, this week, Rocket Lab successfully test-fired that first-stage Rutherford engine for the first time. 
It burned for 200 seconds, produced 21 kilonewtons of full thrust within 1,000 milliseconds of ignition, and even performed multiple restarts, declaring it a significant technical milestone on their path to making Electron a reusable rocket. Their next recovery attempt is slated to take place by the end of the year. And don't forget, Artemis 1 is going for another attempt at liftoff tomorrow afternoon. I'll be here to watch it live with anyone who needs a viewing buddy. buddy! That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you supporters for your help. And my appreciation goes out to those of you who like, comment, share, and watch on both YouTube and Rumble to stick it to cancel culture. Have a nominal weekend. And until next time, Godspeed.